Hello and welcome back. We're looking at the spirit of Antichrist at work today. Now, in my last video, I was showing you how the Antichrist, the person of the Antichrist, was not revealed until the first seal is opened. Now, the Antichrist will be a charismatic, eloquent persuader of men, totally under the control of a demon, which we call the Antichrist spirit. However, both the Apostles John and Paul warn us that this spirit is already at work in the world and in the traditional churches. Let me quote you from 1 John 4. Every spirit which does not acknowledge and confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, does not proceed from him. This non-confession is the spirit of Antichrist. So when people find it hard or just will not confess that Jesus came in the flesh physically, that is the Antichrist spirit. Even if it's good churchgoers and they refuse to acknowledge the incarnation, they are under the influence of an Antichrist spirit. And then from Paul's writings to the church at Thessalonica, for the mystery of lawlessness, that hidden principle of rebellion, against constituted authority, have you noticed any of that around, is already at work in the world, but is restrained only until he who restrains is taken out of the way. Now that's the church. When the true church is taken out of the way and we're raptured, then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed. Now that's in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 7 and 8. Now, as I say, our presence at the moment is salt and light in the world, and that restrains the full operation of the spirit of Antichrist and its full incarnation, as it were, or visible incarnation in one particular personality. Now, some other things to note, apart from lawlessness and rebellion, which are increasing all the time. Another thing to note is that in churches, Taking communion together is more and more rare. In fact, there's hardly any mention of the blood of Christ. That really drives Antichrist spirits <laughs> into a frenzy. So very little taking of communion in churches because as part of that sacrament, as we take the, the wine or the juice, we are supposed to judge ourselves, 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 28. Now, when we judge ourselves, it's we're looking for faults. We're looking for things that we need to repent about. And you'll notice that in the chapters of Revelation 2 and 3, I didn't read all these chapters with you, but if you look back and, and examine each of the seven churches mentioned there, the call to each of them was to repent over some issue or other. In fact, this word repent was the first word that Jesus used when he opened his public ministry in Matthew 4 and verse 17. But now church leaders facing dwindling congregations and the money that they give in their tithes and offerings or whatever, they avoid confronting their members with uncomfortable truths about their personal lives. Repentance is now considered old fashioned. Rather, we will improve our karma will improve, as we've taken some Christians have taken on this idea that our karma will improve by several reincarnations until we reach perfection or nirvana. Now, that is false doctrines, and those are being preached in some churches. Even yoga classes are encouraged by church leaders. Well, we've got to stay fit, and they're used to relieve stress, no discernment whatsoever of the dangers of yoga. The conventional morality of the Christian church has largely been abandoned uh, and instead has been a policy of inclusion. Everyone is welcome. No longer is there any need to clean up sexual habits which the Bible clearly condemns. 
Also, there's probably no mention of the reality of hell or of God's anger at sin in a church with an active antichrist spirit. False teachers go nowhere near that topic. Wolves in sheep's clothing, Matthew 7.15, really do like sheepskin jackets. Their emphasis is on fancy clothes, well-cut suits, a microphone, of course, fashionable dresses, and a gift for using clever language that sways people's emotions. They are addicted also to high volume music, smoke machines, and tight jeans. These are characteristics of a counterfeit church. Now, the Apostle Paul's advice to his spiritual son, I won't be able to read all of it, but I'm reading parts of it from 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 5 in the Amplified Bible. It says, in the last days, people will be lovers of selves, greedy for wealth, blasphemous, disobeying, disobeying parents, ungrateful. My, that's commonplace, isn't it? Without human affection, slanderers, haters of good, betrayers, vain amusements. They love vain amusements. They're lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, does that sound like the experience of people that you know, maybe in your own home or at school or in your church? If you can relate to what I've just been talking about, now you know why. The Antichrist spirit is at work. And then we come to uh, 2 Timothy 4. The time is coming when people will not tolerate, they won't tolerate good, wholesome instructions. They won't want to listen to me, that's, that's for sure. But they've got itching ears for something pleasing and gratifying. They gather one teacher after another, chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors that they hold. Don't be surprised that as we approach the opening of the first seal, worldly church congregations will be deceived into welcoming this man of peace, so-called, and the love of Jesus for many will grow cold. The Antichrist is not far away.